Gemini, and welcome to Adventures in Pixie Land. This is going to be your weekly reading going from March 16th to March 23rd. This space has been cleared and these decks have been shuffled and cut with your energy in mind, so we are ready to jump in. But before we do, let's handle the busy work. Please do not forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that notification bell below so you will know when Gemini content is uploaded. Gemini content comes out every single Thursday. If you're feeling my vibe and would like a personal read, please feel free to check out that description box below. If you're really feeling my vibe and would like to subscribe, please click on that Patreon link in the description box below. Patreon subscribers get a certain number of free monthly personal readings, depending upon subscription level. A little astrology before we jump into the tarot. On the 16th, we have a very busy astrological day. Sun in Pisces, squares, ma square Mars in Gemini. So, a lot of frustration specifically for you because you're in Gemini and that Mars is in Gemini. Venus in Aries, square Pluto in Capricorn. So, more frustration. The morning's going to be packed full of it. We need to find a healthy way, i.e., no yelling and screaming. Go do that workout. Do go, you know, scrub, you know, whatever it is that needs scrubbing. Go do some sort of physical exertion. Uh, that will allow you to transmit that energy easier. That's in the morning. Now, in the afternoon, we have Venus in Taurus, right? So it's going to shift from Aries to Venus now. And Capricorn and Taurus are compatible energy, so that tension is just going to ease on up. And, and Venus is exalted in Taurus because Venus rules Taurus and Libra, so in both of those signs... It's exalted, which means that it is in its element. It feels so good. Love is going to feel so good. You're going to lie like auger in. That is a time of really comfy clothes, really delicious foods, really fine drink. And it's going to be in Venus for a while. So auger in and get all comfy. Everything's going to feel sensual. Okay? And I don't mean that in just a sense of intimacy. I mean exactly what I was talking about. Wanting to eat good food. Wanting to appreciate life in a different way. Wanting that sweetness that goes along with that Venus energy. Being focused on that creativity, allowing it to stretch and breathe and room and feeling all those really good, yummy ideas coming into play. Just feel it in your bones, right? And later on in that day, same day, Mercury in Pisces is conjunct Neptune in Pisces. So you're going to have a lot of intuitive intelligence going on about how to gather that energy and make that Venus and Taurus really be something great for that creativity. It's there. The energy is but yours to use. Okay? Go find it. On the 17th, another busy day in the sky. We have a void, of course, moon happening at 10.14 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And at 10.25 a.m., we will have the waning crescent moon enter into Aquarius. It's also St. Patrick's Day, so go get your groove on with that, right? Mercury in Pisces is square Mars in Gemini, with the sun in Pisces conjunct Mer Mercury in Pisces, Venus in Taurus, sextile Saturn in Pisces. So you're going to want to finish something that you, can, you started about two uh, months ago, okay? But you're going to want to handle it in a responsible way, and you're going to want to handle it with some sort of commitment to it, but there are going to be people who don't like you handling this in a different way. They were expecting you to handle it in the way you always handle it. And when you start handling this, whatever this is, differently, they're going to have a problem with that. You might have an argument of some kind happening there. Do not worry about their objections. You do what you know is right. Hold that integrity deep within your core. Be compassionate, be gracious, offer the grace to this other people's, but do what you know is right in your core for you, okay? Don't let other people's opinion change that for you. On the 18th, the waning crescent moon in Aquarius, while Mercury in Pisces is sextile Pluto in Capricorn. Ideas are going to flow. Choose the things that you feel really passionate about so you can find solutions. It's a great day to focus on something where it's been a problem for a while that you haven't found a solution for. It will come. Uh, it's on a Saturday. Focus on it. Don't get so drunk the night before that you don't have that ability the next day. On the 19th, you have uh, the Void of Course Moon happening at 6.33 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. 
And at 11.12 a.m., the waning crescent moon is going to enter into Pisces while Mercury enters into Aries. So the brain is going to be really, really active, and you're going to want to make plans. But that moon energy is going to want you to reflect. So reflect first. Think through those plans. Make sure you're considering uh, how they affect yourself and how they might affect other people. All right? And then go forth and do. On the 20th, it is Happy Austera, also known as Spring Equinox, when the balance between light and dark is even. It's also Happy Aries season because the sun enters into Aries while the waning crescent moon is in Pisces. You will have a lot of drive with a desire to reflect before you take action. Stopping and thinking, being intuitive, being intelligent, being you know, heartfelt and compassionate, right? Before you take your, your forward motions. You may be focused on doing something correctly. And what that really means is on the 17th and the 20th, what's happening there with those planetary movements is the universe is giving you a chance to have a do-over, to handle something the right way, to handle something like you should have handled it in the past, but you didn't. You didn't do it the right way. You're gonna get a chance to do it the right way. So step up and do what you know is right. On the 21st, you have a void of course moon happening at 11.58 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And at 12.01 p.m. it's going to enter into Aries. And at 1.23 it's going to be a new moon in Aries. So you have the sun, the moon, Mercury, and Jupiter all in Aries. If you have any fire signs prominent in your chart, especially. But for all people, it will be, you might feel excited. Energy is going to be up. You're going to want to focus on what you can get done fast because there's going to be a certain level of impatience going on with all that Aries energy. It's going to be go, go, go. That is a busy day of the week. Now, on the, it's also a very lucky day, all those conjunctions coming together in the middle of Aries season like that. If one was looking for something valuable, this would be the day to roam about and look for it. On the 22nd, you have Ramadan beginning at sundown. So Ramadan blessings to any of the people watching that might celebrate. You have a waxing crescent moon in Aries, conjunct Jupiter in Aries. So opportunities are waiting for you to either find them or create them. So again, get out there into that world and do it right. On the 23rd at 1.13 p.m. you will Eastern Daylight Time, you will have a void of course moon. And at 2.42 p.m. you will have that waxing crescent moon in Taurus. But that is not the star of the show this day. It is that Pluto is going to finally go into Aquarius. And it's welcome to the age of Aquarius. And that is a huge deal. This is like literally the thing that all those 60s songs are about. We're in it now. We're in it. Last time Pluto was in Aquarius was between 1777 and 1797. And nothing of historical importance happened then at all, right? It was, wasn't like North America set up its own government. Right? And no, there were no revolutions. The French Revolution didn't happen. We didn't start writing constitutions and things of this nature. We weren't setting up a government that was for the people by the people. Right? We will feel passionate about our futures. And we are going to want to try to seek, seek some kind of stability and security in a way that is calming and nurturing for all. Calming and nurturing for all is the interesting part there with that conjunction because during those same times when we were having this age of Aquarius back in the 1700s there that it was in, we had a lot of social revolution happening, which we have been seeing recently. If you have noticed it, it's a lot of social revolution. There's all these conflicting sides. There's all this push between the people who want things to stay the same and the people who want things to be different. Generational pushes, in fact happening right and that kind of thing this is what it's for here we go we're about to flip anybody who wants the old way and the old order is going to find, suddenly find themselves needing a new place to be not just in this country but in the globe things things that once were acceptable that might have been toxic but also considered acceptable will start to shift some more it's an interesting dance to see the world do. So get ready.
because here it comes, whether you like it or not. Your mutable sign, so you guys are usually pretty good at that, you know, the energy shifting around. Your energy shift around quite a bit. It's kind of the nature of it. Gemini, March 16th through the 23rd. 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 Gemini, March 16th through the 23rd, okay, I will clarify all these cards, but before I do, past, present, near future, someone to you, you to this someone, balance, outcome summary okay also this is a general reading take what resonates and leave the rest just because this doesn't sound like a story of your life does not mean there is not a message in here for you and there is no gender in tarot you are either walking up to someone and talking or someone is walking up to you and talking nobody spends all of their time communicating with others where they're only doing one we both, we all do both. You possess divine feminine and divine masculine energy in you at any given moment of your entire life. This whole reading is a conversation between two people in some kind of relationship. And a relationship meaning a continued interaction between any two people. You apply to your life what kind of relationship that is. Now, in your recent past, Four of Cups, there was some offer being brought in to you and you said, no, thank you. Or you missed that opportunity, like you found out about it afterwards and you were like, damn, I should have done that. One of the two. Then you got this chariot energy there that is cancer energy, so you rush forward into something. Maybe somebody said no to you, too. That's always possible. Um, you rushed forward. Take a look at that. Why is that man sitting on top of the carriage? Why isn't he in the carriage? How is he supposed to steer the carriage from there? Where is the, the harnesses on those horses? How are they even pulling this carriage? How is it moving? It seems a bit sketchy. Are we sure that guy's even moving and those horses just aren't even running away? Are we certain? I don't think we are certain. You rushed forward with something perhaps a bit impetuously. As Geminis are wont to do upon occasion, manifested something here. This is Gemini Virgo energy. You manifested something. In this rushing forward, you manifested something. Now, there is in your present moment this give and take happening, this generosity, this back and forth with this, this energy, whether it's good or bad. So it depends on the deck. Sometimes the Six of Pentacles is not such a good thing, and sometimes it is. And this deck is usually a good thing. I think we need some more clarification here to see if this energy is actually in balance. Since this over here is kind of an illusion of running forward. You rushed forward, but it wasn't from a place of stability. So you might have had some illusions surrounding where you rushed into. The guy's not even wearing a shirt or shoes. Okay, that's so not planned out. That's how rushed he is. In your present, well, your near future here, King of Cups, any water sign, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, heavy on the Scorpio, also a card of Libra. Get the King of Cups. That's a person who's emotionally balanced. It also can be very emotionally expressive. 
We'll have to find out who that is when we clarify for you. It's going to be some sort of water, possibly water sign, possibly Libra, or it could be you just trying to be emotionally balanced, or it could be this maybe this person is emotionally balanced. Uh, judgment card there that is Scorpio energy. A choice. There's a choice to be made here in your near future. We're definitely going to need some clarification there. Three of Wands. Someone to you. They're looking out towards the future, trying to figure out something. And they are going to communicate with you whatever it is, vision it is that they see of that future. But they are ready to go. Ready to get out there. And those, they're just waiting for the right wave so they can ride on out of there. You to that someone. That's what made me chuckle there. That Queen of Cups. That is, firstly, King and Queen of Cups. Okay, so either this is also you. Or you are interacting with somebody who is your match set. Is somebody you view as your counterpart and or your equal. Queen of Cups, any water sign, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Heavy on the Cancer, also a card of Gemini. So you are using your intuition. This is you and yourself. You are showing up as yourself in one of your higher levels of yourself. Needing to use your intuition about your future with whoever this person is. Two of Swords. This is Minor Arcana, Justice card, Libra Energy. Okay. If this is the other person, this is who is bringing balance. Now, it is the court system in addition to that. Okay. It is contracts. It's documents. It's paperwork of some kind. It's also an indecision, though. And it could be that you have, you know, there's some indecision here about the future here. Because by the swords, this is an argument. This person is literally manifesting problems for this person. I mean, look at this. That's how that energy is moving. They're manifesting difficulties for you on purpose. Okay. There's an argument happening here. And one person is winning. One person has problems and the other one doesn't. Scorpio energy here with this death card. It's either about a death or a rebirth. Have to clarify to find out. You got conflicting energies there. Scorpio energy again. Like there. What's happening usually for lately with these summaries is one of them is you, one of them is them. That's how it works. And the other one is basically where your relationship now stands after you've been through this energy. Four of Pentacles. Someone is holding on really tight. Somebody either wants an ending or a rebirth, and the other person is holding on, clutching. It's a lack mentality, that Four of Pentacles. Holding on to those. that This is symbols of my reality, and I'm going to hold it. Right? You, but you're not letting the energy flow. When you hold like that, you're blocking that Pentacle energy. If this is you, you're going to create your own financial difficulties. Do not hold on so damn tight. Ten of Wands. That's setting down a burden, not one to carry this around anymore. A person can't possibly carry anywhere. They've even already got their oxen weighed down. Because that to me is an oxen. So. Let's get some clarification here. What is this Four of Cups about? Gemini's past. Ooh, mental imprisonment going on there. What is this Four of Cups about? Feeling trapped by something, maybe? The star. What is this Four of Cups about? King of Cups. Hierophant energy there. That's Taurus. It's Aquarius energy with that uh, star card. Hierophant can also be about uh, higher levels of commitment. It can be about marriage. It can be about higher education. It can be about religion. This is an authority figure of some kind, an official, if you will. If this was like a courtroom, that would be it. Would be the judge. I mean, this person is clearly dressed like the Pope. I mean, look at them, like or at least a cardinal. It's a person in a position of power. Okay, with their funny hat and their strange clothes with these people down here. I'm looking to them in reference. Right? Keys. Keys sitting right down there, standing out to me at the thing. This, uh, <coughs> there was an element of destiny or wish fulfillment here about the commitment between uh, this person and you. You had this commitment, had you up in your head with that imprisonment energy. 
four of cups. Maybe there was something about this commitment that you just, you didn't want it anymore. What is this chariot card about? You made a run off without having a real plan here. Unexpected income. Oh, that's good. What's this chariot card? It's following that instinct works. Ace of Pentacles, Ten of Swords. What is this chariot card about? The Wands. It's any fire sign, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Having in the Leo, also a card of Cancer. You could also just have a Leo prominent in your chart. Cancer prominent in your chart. Either one of those. Chariot energy there, the double Cancer energy. Moving forward quickly without a real plan, Ten of Swords, because of an ending. Ace of Pentacles, you got lucky. That Ace of Pentacles, something came in, possibly from a fire sign, possibly because you were action taking or actions that you took in the past. What is this Magician card? You manifested something here. What's this Magician card? Toil and labor, you manifested maybe a new job? What is this magician card? Judgment. Okay. The choice. These two cards are going to piles of interrelated. What is this magician card? Nine of Wands, Ace of Swords. You get some sort of realization, possibly about a fire sign. Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, heavy on the Sagittarius, also a card of Scorpio, which here, here, there, could be interacting with the Scorpio for sure. Scorpio energy here, Scorpio energy there. You mean it's some sort of choice here because of a realization you had about the amount of work something took or something about your work? Nine of Wands. You might have rushed off towards something else, but was a little impatient and impetuous with it. Nine of Wands doesn't always think things through. It's player energy. What is this Six of Pentacles about? It's a gift. So it's this is a likely a positive thing. Because, you know, unexpected income, Ace of Pentacles, so it's good. So this is like getting the Ace of Pentacles again. What is this Six of Pentacles? Okay, what is this Six of Pentacles? Okay, what is this Six of Pentacles? Okay, get this here. Because again, right, Chariot Energy. Chariot Energy, right? And again, these are not tethered, right? Again, with the light and dark, not tethered. It doesn't seem like it's going anywhere anytime anywhere fast if the animals aren't even hooked up to the chariot with the Cancer energy again. Any water sign, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, heavy on the Pisces, also a card of Aquarius. Uh, Queen of Swords, any air sign, Aquarius, Libra, Gemini, heavy on the Libra, also a card of Virgo. Could be some sort of, in your present moment, you could have some sort of communication coming in, possibly from an air sign, another air sign. Heavy on the Aquarius there, because this could represent an air sign, another air sign besides you, right? And that's Aquarius energy. Or it could be an emotional communication coming in from a Cancer. Those two would be in supportive. But it feels more like it's the energy. Because you rushed forward in the past with that chariot energy, you were going on instinct, okay? You ended up with this Ace of Pentacles here in your past. There was an opportunity that was presented to you for an equal give and take with someone. Nine of Cups energy there. That's the offer. Possibly with an air, another air sign. But it could just be you there. It really feels very much you, but it could be with a Virgo that you had this offer. Or it could be, um, so the Queen of Swords, because it's a, also a card of Libra, and Libra is uh, ruled by the planet Venus, so is Taurus, and often those energies interchange. So it could be with a Virgo, it could be with a, a Libra or another air sign of some kind, or it could be a Taurus, but it really feels like it's just your energy. You had this opportunity. It wasn't someone else's, it was presented to you. You had to make a head over heart decision. 
with that Queen of Swords energy, or that other person really did. You felt like they did in your, or do or are in your present moment, because that's your present moment, that it would be the, the 16th, basically. Okay, because your present moment starts when the reading starts. What is this King of Cups? Or whatever day of the week it is when you watch this reading. Journey. King of Cups. It's like, again, like Cancer energy. What is this King of Cups? Page of Pentacles. What's this King of Cups? Nine of Swords. What's this King of Cups? Wheel of Fortune. There's divine timing at play here. There's an opportunity that's going to, a communication for, because pages are communication. Knights are movement, okay? Uh, there's an opportunity in your near future here for some sort of journey. It's both of these cards together could absolutely indicate travel. Some sort of trip you could take or this other person can take. It's going to have some sort of travel involved. It's, it's, uh, the divine is at play here. Divine timing is happening. Nine of Swords, there's a lot of worry about this travel. This person needs to be emotionally balanced about it, and they might not be. Nine of Swords, that's worried. Be careful with the Nine of Swords energy or the Eight of Swords energy. Okay, the one is mental. Eight of Swords, Nine of, of Swords is still mental because swords are mental. But, you know, in the, in the sense of it is, um, it's air energy, so it's about thinking. Okay, so that's what I mean by that. But, Worries or prayers we don't want answered, right? So to hold on to that kind of energy. And this was something that it came to me uh, from another person that I was an understanding I need to have. We use these energies. Five of Swords, every time you're like, I'm not dealing with your drama. Block, that's Five of Swords. You know, if you're in a, 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 a sporting competition and you need to amp that up so we can win, yeah, team, let's go, rah, rah, right? That's five of wands, right? Okay. You either, you use these energies. We all use these energies. If you don't find a way to release them, they'll run around and run havoc in your life. You will make more problems for yourself by focusing on only problems and not solutions. What's the solution to the problem? Assume you will find a solution to the problem and it's just the right, just a, meanings, a means of moving the puzzle pieces around in the right way to find the answer. You will find it, but you have to be dedicated to it. Don't spend the time and worry. You have a choice to make here and if you're worried, you're not gonna make a balanced choice. You need to, to be this king of swords, I mean king of cups here, be emotionally balanced. I don't know if this is you or if it's the other person. It feels like it might be the other person, but they're worried about something. What is this judgment card about? What is this judgment card about? Poverty. It's like being in five of pentacles. Somebody's worried about being left out in the cold. What is this judgment card about? Three of cups. What is this judgment card about? Energy. What's this judgment card about? That's Capricorn energy. What's this double judgment card about? Two of Swords. So you get this down here. Look at that. That's interesting. Contracts, documents, indecision. Right? So it's sitting in this, not sit, having to make a choice. There's this Five of Pentacles energy, this feeling of loss, feeling of lack. Five of Pentacles. Poverty card is the Five of Pentacles. There's a worry. Worried about the, about a reunion. Like, I feel like this is two different things. Like, you're feeling indecisive. Because on one hand, you're worried about lack, about Five of Pentacles, about being left out in the cold. On the other hand, you're worried about something with this reunion or this celebration being toxic here with this. Could be with a Capricorn, doesn't have to be. Uh, but there being toxicity here in this group, in this cycle, in this pattern. You're worried because it doesn't seem to have a good solution. You're not sure what to do because it feels like either way you lose. It's such a bad energy to have. You have to assume you're gonna find the solution. What is this three of wands about? 
Okay, all right, so this person's going to communicate with you. That's part of how you know who they are. They're going to reach out to you. What is this Three of Wands about? Eight of Wands. So, yeah, they're going to communicate with you. What is this Three of Wands about? Five of Cups are feeling sad. What is this Three of Wands about? If you have to travel, they don't want you to. Six of Wands. So, they want victory with you. They're looking out towards their future. They're feeling sad because they see where things are. And they want victory with you, Six of Wands, so they're going to communicate. This is like basically getting the same card there. Seven and eight. Seventy-eight might be a significant for you. Interesting. So that's how you'll know who they are, because they're going to reach out and communicate with you. What is this Queen of Cups? You need to be using your intuition with their communications with this person. What is this Queen of Cups? I guess that's the one. Privileged lady in reverse. I... Interesting. That's an interesting... That, that presents me with an interesting question, Gemini. Okay, sorry about that, Gemini. I had to take a moment there because uh, traditionally speaking, you don't read the Kipper upside down. You can clearly see the difference between the one side and another. The ones where um, you can't tell the difference visually, and it's easy to see on the back of the cards, so it's like uh, easier to explain. When you're shuffling this, you can't really tell what the difference is between up and down here and up and down there. But you can here because this person's, you know, the comic mask there is in the center. So the ones where the cards look like this on the underneath, um, you know, on the back side there, it, these you can read reversals because you can't tell the difference, right? Whereas if you go look in the Kipper deck for this, uh, there, there is no listing for reversals. The, the, the book that every tarot card comes with a book, okay? And they will tell you what these things mean if you wanted to go learn it. But reversal, because reversals can mean different things in different decks. This came out like this, though. So I'm going to say, uh, because this is clearly a person that you're interacting with, whether you identify as uh, masculine or feminine, it doesn't matter. It's just an energy that you have to use your intuition about because they are not acting right. It's privileged lady in reverse. Maybe somebody that you previously viewed in a particular fashion that is now not behaving in the same fashion. They're not behaving um, in the way you would ordinarily expect them to. I, I don't have another way of wording that because, you know, what is a privileged lady? And that's going to depend upon your view of a privileged lady. If you were viewing them, uh, and I'm going to word this in the tarot terms, if you were viewing them in Empress energy before where they were acting like as the divine feminine, maybe now they're acting toxic. Right, because you have this opportunity in the past, right, with this, and then you're coming into this present moment where you're like having this back and forth here about what should I do, what choice should I make within, uh, you know, on one hand, I don't want to be broke. On the other hand, there's something within this community that's toxic. This person you're interacting with here. Who says they want a victory with you that's sitting in sadness. They might, you might be perceiving them as acting toxic. What is this Queen of Cups? I had to do a little bit of research there. This Sun card. What is this Queen of Cups? That's Leo energy. Uh, the Magician. Shimmer energy. High Priestess. That is needing to use your intuition. It's Cancer energy, which again is the Queen of Cups is all about using one's intuition. Now, you could be interacting with a Leo, a Virgo, another Gemini, a Cancer. Like, at the part of the point for me with the Kipper decks is to try to really auger in to help you figure out who these people are, to make it more clear. Motion detected at front door. There you go. So there's some information here. That you're you needing you're needing to use your intuition about this person. You're trying to manifest happiness, right? Possibly with this person. But there is something here being illuminated for you. 
they want victory with you and it seems to you like you want victory with them but there's something that they're saying with that privileged lady in reverse see it changes the whole definition here with that privileged lady being reversed there's something you're not sure of two of swords five of swords you feel some something's not in balance here something's off something is wrong you feel it this person's not acting right and you can feel it in your core so you go five of swords here that's why the argument uh, outcome is an argument here what is this two of swords because you're trusting your instinct you're running on instincts here and your instincts usually lead you the right way. You can feel it in your bones when something's right. So that's how come you can move so fast with that Knight of Swords energy. Sometimes moving so fast does get you in trouble. But you do actually, you guys are actually as fast as you move in being a mutable sign, regardless how you might look to other people. You do actually think things through. You can actually overthink things. As air signs are wont to do. What is this Two of Swords? community this person's definitely in a community that you're already in three of cups there's some sort of connection going on there's some sort of reconciliation they could be from a friend group or something it could be uh, work what is this two of swords knight of pentacles what is this two of swords that's interesting seven of pentacles what's this two of swords I mean, that's Pisces energy. You need a higher perspective on this person. Uh, Knight of Pentacles, any earth sign. Aquarius, uh, sorry, Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. Heavy on the Virgo, also card of Leo. Now, of course, sun card here, right, where there was something for you, where it's not quite clear, something be illuminated. This here is Leo energy. It feels like illumination, though. I don't think this is a Leo. It's possibly an earth sign, probably a Virgo. You... Um, but it doesn't have to be. You I mean, take it as it resonates. Could be a Pisces. There's something about this person within this community that you need a higher perspective on, and you perhaps need more patience for. When you are not sure of something, when something is is you know, what is this? I don't know what this is. If this, this feels wrong, this feels false with your Gemini energy, this you in your brain. Like what is this? I see this. I follow the, my, my intuition where it takes me. I'm running on this intuition. I'm moving from place to place. I'm doing the things I need to do. I do what, you know, I always seem to be lucky. I always seem to, like, if that's your energy that you normally stay in, there's something about the energy coming from this person that's going to you go, mm, 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 with this, because this is, and this, this is the same. This is, uh-uh. Why? Imprisonment. Uh-uh, something's wrong. Something's wrong here. I could feel there's something wrong here. You were dealing with them in the past. You're dealing with them in the future here. Again, something in this community is making you go, mm, nope. Nope. This person's acting funny. This person. This person. Okay. They're acting funny. You can feel it in your bones. You need a higher perspective. You need to be patient. You need to wait it out. If this person is intent on causing trouble for you, they will show their hand. You will see it somewhere. If your instinct is telling you something's still wrong, you will follow your instinct to how to, to figure out what the wrong part is. What is this Five of Swords? There's some sort of argument that erupts here. What is this Five of Swords? Expectation. Okay. You have some sort of expectation. They have some sort of expectation. One of the two. Right? What is this Five of Swords? Two of Cups. Or about the relationship. What's this Five of Swords? Four of Wands. What's this Five of Swords? Six of Cups. So this is a soul connection. You've known this person either for a very long time, if you had previous lives with them potentially. There is some sort of disagreement about an expectation within this relationship. Two of Cups, it's Cancer energy. It doesn't have to be a Cancer. Four of Wands, that is the halfway to marriage card. 11-11 might be important to you. 11-11 means you're on the right path. Keep going. Wedding cake people there. So some sort of committed relationship happening here. Something going on to this next level. Somebody expected 
you to want to, to move to the next level in some fashion, and you might not want to. They weren't expecting your hesitation. And now there will be a conflict over your hesitation. What is this death card? Don't avoid the confrontation. You need it. There's something that's not going to come to light if you don't have that argument, if you're not willing to have it. What is this death card about? What is this death card about? That's pretty specific. Oof, yeah, they want to really make sure that we know. Um, Nine of Swords, any air sign, Aquarius, Libra, Gemini, heavy on the Gemini, also a card of Taurus, Queen of Cups, any water sign, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, heavy on the Cancer, also a card of Gemini, but you're in the reverse there. Death card. It is only with an ending that you will get this brand new opportunity. Great fortune. If you've been having rough luck recently, right? Things just haven't really been turning out in your favor. It is because you're trying to avoid some sort of argument, some sort of ending, some sort of confrontation. You are trying to avoid a tower here. But you need the tower. The tower is how you wipe the slate clean. The towers are what wipe the slate clean. Towers don't mean that, you know, if you're having, say you have a, a, a marriage. Just because you have a tower doesn't mean you're gonna have, it's going to end your marriage. It just means your marriage will now be different from this moment to what it was before. The towers are sudden and they're from the divine. You cannot avoid them. You keep trying to transmute something that's not meant to be transmuted to your detriment. What is this Four of Pentacles? Concern. Okay, so you're going to have some sort of message come in from somebody who's really trying to hold on to you. What is this Four of Pentacles? Nine of Cups. They're only worried about their own happiness, though. What is this Four of Pentacles? King of Swords. What's this Four of Pentacles? Page of Swords. Okay, so King of Swords, any air sign, Aquarius, Libra, Gemini. Also a card of Capricorn, which you have here, that's that toxicity. Okay, so somebody's trying to hold on really tight, but they're really only focused on their own happiness and not yours. So not equal give and take, which is why you have that privileged lady in reverse. And they've been watching. They've been watching you carefully. And they, they may have made some sort of decision here with this King of Swords. They may have decided to be judge and jury. So they want to talk to you about whatever that is. So they expect critical. That's also a card of Aquarius in case, uh, very specifically, in case you're interacting with an Aquarius. What is this Ten of Wands? The Lovers. So, okay, it's your energy. What is this Ten of Wands? Two of Pentacles, what's this Ten of Wands? Five of Pentacles, what is this Ten of Wands? Four of Swords. Yeah, you, you want a break, or they want a break from this relationship itself, the Lover's card. Look out towards the future. Feeling this uh, Five of Pentacles, feeling this loss, this lack mentality, this feeling of poverty. Four of Swords, needing a rest. Stand at a crossroads with this relationship because there's just a lack happening here. It's not enough. Whatever it is that's been going on, whatever this exchange is between the two of you, it's not enough. There's not enough energy here to work with. There's not enough pay for you to for this job to be worth it. There's not enough emotional support to continue this friendship. There's not enough energy between the two of you to try to keep this, whatever it is. So you want to set down this burden, or they do. One of you is going to talk to the other one about setting down a burden. Advice. Advice for Gemini, March 16th through the 23rd.
advice for Gemini, March 16th through the 23rd. Stop avoiding this tower. That's the advice. Three of Pentacles. <sighs> Three of Pentacles. That is uh, work. That's home. That's personal life. That's a commitment of a higher level. That is a documentation where people know that you interact with this person. People are aware that you're connected. It's an official relationship. The tower that is destruction that is this towers happen for us though. Do you want to stay in this lack mentality? Do you want to stay in this place that you're in, this current energy where you feel like you're walking on eggshells or you're not quite getting things done or you can't quite accomplish what you want or you have that five of pentacles? You want to stay in that? Or do you want to end that, right? You will only have this great fortune when you have this energy. Okay, you have to have an ending happen so the new things can come in. I don't know what you've been debating about or who you've been debating about not communicating with anymore, but go ahead and do it. Whatever it is, pull that trigger. Stop communicating if that's what it is. Okay? Anybody who's really meant for you will come back into your life. The divine does not just let people leave and then they don't bring them back if they're supposed to be there. The tower. Okay? Ten of Cups. Yes, this tower will affect your interpersonal life <clears throat> with that Ten of Cups energy. But there is great fortune coming after you've had a tower moment. Embrace the tower. Stop running from it. Let's see your advice. View of a yes or no question that you would like answered. This is the time to think it because this is the deck that does it. Message for Gemini. You're ready. Message for Gemini. That would be a yes, by the way. No need to worry. Follow your instincts. Message for Gemini. Don't overthink it. Follow your instincts. Big happy changes. That's the Ace of Pentacles. You're ready. No need to worry. Big happy changes. Stop avoiding the tower. Let it fall, baby, let it fall. It's the time for shit to fall. Advice for Gemini, March 16th through the 23rd. A new start is coming, new moon. Advice for Gemini, March 16th through the 23rd. Balance, spirituality, and practicality, full moon in Pisces. Advice for Gemini. Nothing will come of this situation void, of course, moon. You are worried about this tower so hard that you are making your life harder in trying to avoid this tower. It's like much ado about nothing. That's what void of course means. There's no energy at play on the table, but you're trying to force something to work that doesn't work. The only thing you can do in a void of course moon is finish tasks that are already started. This ending is already in process. You must allow the tower to fall. You create more problems for yourself for longer periods of time by worrying about how this change happens and in trying to avoid the change. You are a mutable sign. You transmute changes. It is your whole function of your energy in this sign. It is exactly why you're so lucky. You are in your own way. What you don't see coming at the bottom of the deck. Your dreams need a practical plan. Full moon and Taurus. Instead of trying to figure out, how do I stop this thing from ending? Figure out. What you do after it ends. Okay, when this happens, if a scenario A occurs, I will do B, A, B, C. Come on, you're an air sign, you're a thinker. What do you need to release, waning moon? Bring love into the situation, new moon and Aquarius. You and your loved ones are safe, new moon and Cancer. Your family will figure it out. You will find a new normal. Stop fighting. <laughs> Message for Gemini. Reawaken the magic. We fairies fade from sight of those who deny us. Fantasy is in truth the old wisdom. 
trust that you can see us and reawaken the magic. Believe and intuitive answers will arise. That is what I have for you, Gemini. I hope it helps. And just remember, as you go about the world this week, that you are a child of the universe, no less than the trees and the stars. And you have a right to be here. <laughs>